Hey everybody, Jerome Maldonado. So we're documenting the process of buying land, building houses, video number 19, and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a few things on the exterior and a few things on the interior. So last video we talked about finishing up the framing, getting our inspections, working on insulation, and so now I wanna show you some of what we were talking about last time in actuality, and then also talk and prep to you guys, talk and prep you guys for what's next and what you should be thinking about as far as phone calls, scheduling, um, for the next part of your build. So we laugh the house, our stucco's gonna go on. Now the drywall is going on inside, we'll make our way inside here in just a bit. Now once we get to this phase, a lot of times there's piles of dirt around the house. So what I like to do is I bring my tractor guys back and I do what's called a semi-finished grade. It's not a finished grade, but it's enough of a grade where the stucco guys could come in and respectfully get the stucco deep enough in the ground so that when it's finished and you remove those piles of dirt, you don't see stucco exposed on a higher elevation that it shouldn't be. So we came in and we're working on our grading and drainage ponds. Now, if you remember the um, back in video number two, we talked about working on architecture engineering. Part of that engineering is our civil engineering and our dirt work. Well, now we get to see in physical reality how that civil engineering actually comes into play. We have three retention ponds that our, in, our civil engineer called out for grading and drainage. We're doing on-site drainage on this in particular build. There's no curbing gutters. This is more of a rural bu uh, build. So we're doing on-site retention ponds for the rainwater runoff from the roof of the house and off of the uh, and off the property site itself. And so here's one example that we had the tractor guys out yesterday. We have a retention pond over here. We have a big giant one over here. And all of these downspouts that you see right back here, the mass majority of our water comes off the backside of the house, and so we need to displace that. Now, the engineer originally had it over here. I'm building a courtyard wall on this section over here, so I don't want a retention pond in the middle of my primary part of my backyard. So I simply called up the engineer, I said, hey, I have all this extra land, can I just simply migrate the pond over a little bit to the south to be able to take advantage of the courtyard space without having a drainage pond in the middle of my usable space for the backyard. And he said, yes, no problem. Just make sure that the capacity, the holding and retention area is the same as I called out. And I said, no problem. So we, we measured him out. We looked at his engineering yesterday and we did a retention pond. So now the stucco guys can come in and start their base coat without having to have piles of dirt stacked up against the house, the foundation, and now I'll get a better quality finished product on my exterior. Now let's go inside, let's take a look at the drywall, the insulation, and what we need to start considering on the next part of the build. Come join me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is starting to look like a house. So this is where it gets exciting. We got our fireplace over here. This is where our big screen television is gonna go, surround sound. We got our surround sound speakers and stuff that are going in. And um, this is our kitchen area. This is gonna be our center island. And we got a house, ladies and gentlemen. So this is where it gets really exciting. We have our, uh, our butler's pantry right behind me here. And the sheetrock is going in. So look, you could do, this is a more mid-century modern home, but one thing that I do in mid-century modern homes that I used to do is I used to use straight corner beat. It was like the 90 degree corner beat. On this house, I'm using bullnose, and the reason why is just because of the ease of, of cleanup at the end. The bullnose are a lot easier to keep from getting damaged, and there's a lot less repair work. Long term, homeowners really like them. In spite of the mid-century modern look where people like the sharp corners, this is such a minute quality, you still get that mid-century modern look, but a better quality product at the end finish that's just more durable long term. So I like using st stuff like this. It's gonna give me longevity, durability, and less warranty issues, and also a better quality product to the finished buyer. So in spite of the mid-century modern look, I'll make executive decisions to do better quality, higher quality product that's gonna last people long term. So this is one example of that. Now, the sheetrock is up. We're finishing it up today. The tape and textures are gonna be here tomorrow. Well, they'll come in, they'll tape and texture all of this. Now, we've already lined this up weeks back, especially because of the supply chain right now. Now, one thing that I'm looking at right now that we're missing is our surround sound speakers up on top. So something happened where the insulation guys or somebody covered them up. So one phone call that I'll make is I'll go back through the plans. I'll look at all my light fixtures and make sure that the sheetrock guys or insulation guys didn't accidentally cover up over a receptacle. You will find that stuff, but it's later in the build after the house is painted, trimmed out, and then you're putting cover plates and you're putting light fixtures up and you go, oh my God, where in the heck is this light switch for this one light fixture? And lo and behold, it's behind sheetrock. And so it's on the plans, so typically it's really easy to find. If it happens, not a big deal, but why, why go through the trouble of having to do 
drywall repairs at the end of the builds if you can mitigate them now. So one of the things I noticed, my surround sound speakers are not exposed, so I have a feeling that they're behind the sheetrock. We'll, we'll get the uh, surround sound low voltage guy to come down, confirm that, and work on getting those exposed for us to make sure that we have those available um, for trim out later without having to cut up sheetrock. Now, a few factors that you want to take into consideration. Remember, we're, we have supply chain issues still right now. And even if we don't, when you're watching this video, understand that you want to be on top of your game. You don't want to get to the end of drywall and then sit back and have to wait for your tile guys for two months to be able to come in, or two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, because that's dead time. So what we want to do is prevent dead time. And so I've already called the painters. Um, we gave the painters notice that the drywall was started and that we were three weeks away from needing paint. Now, I had talked to the painters six weeks ago just to let them know that drywall was gonna get started and where we were. Now, what we're gonna do today is, um, is we're talking to them about letting them know that we're on track. We'll, we'll follow up with our painters and let them know we're coming. Now, for those of you guys that are doing custom-built, finished-out cabinets, I mean, uh, custom-built, finished-out closets, um, this is where you talk to your trim guys and tell them, bring my doors, my jams, my closets, because they'll come in, they'll put that stuff in right after the drywall's in, so that when the painters come to paint the house, they can caulk and seal all of the closets, <clears throat> all of the uh, door jams, and then the painters can come in, paint the doors, paint the door jams, paint the trim, and paint the entire house all at one time. Now, one thing that I did tell the painters, I said, in spite of the drywall going on, if you want to get started and you have the ability to get started early, all our exposed wood and beams can be stained, sanded, and, um, and we can start working towards getting that stuff done, all our natural wood. Our exterior could start getting painted, and we can start getting a lot of this stuff done prior to them coming in and actually putting paint on the physical walls. Now, let's take a look at the bathroom and the tile guys and what we need to start doing with as far as flooring and tile for trim out. So we got a little bit of a, so we got some water board here. This water board in all our wet areas. Uh, one of the things that they had done, if you guys come in here to the bathroom, is we have a bathtub going in right here. And with this bathtub going in right here, they were gonna put, they were originally gonna put regular sheetrock. And you could get away with it by code. You can put a regular sheetrock behind this. But I always try to go give people a better quality product. Why not spend an extra $20 put in some wet board, and when you put in the wet board in here, if they ever have water leaks or there's ever any issues with splashing, the, the paint gets saturated, the tile gets porous and the grout lines, whatever it is, the back walls are protected. This is less important, but still an, an add-on feature that just speaks in regards to your attention to quality and the quality behind everything that you do in your home. So we're putting wet board. That wet board here is an add-on that I, I had them bring in so we could put wet board behind all of our bathtub areas. You guys will see the wet board in our shower areas. I also made them do it on this wall. Even though it's a snail shower, water should never hit this wall. But the shower is right in here. So why not spend an extra 20, 30 bucks, a few extra sheets of, of wet shield, and put on some water board right on the shower areas as well so that when they tile this, all of this is water protected so that your home buyers never have to worry about mold or water damage to their, to their dwelling in the future. We use a lot, we use blow-in insulation. You guys can see here how all the insulation's done. This is called, this is good marketing. The, the suppliers, they put their phone numbers on here and um, great marketing. But it's all blow-in insulation. We did R33 in the walls, R50 in the ceilings, and the energy efficiency of our homes are absolutely incredible. Um, now, shower pans. This is something you wanna give your tile guys heads up before the sheetrock guys even get here. So one of the phone calls that we made a couple weeks ago, and I did a follow-up today as I told them, hey, you guys can come in now and we can start doing our shower pans. We'll fill this in and we'll start getting all the, the, uh, the, the base pan for the shower to bleed into the drain so that we could start tiling as soon as the drywall guys are out of here and he can come in and do what's called a dry pack on your showers and make sure that the pans are ready to go for tile as soon as the drywall guys are done. So this is the first phase of our tile. Um, this is the first phase of our base. Now those of you guys who are doing lower end homes that aren't doing custom um, showers and pans, you guys are using slide in stuff. This is less crucial at this point in, in the game, but in a couple of weeks from now, it's gonna become important. For those of you guys who are doing quality builds like we are, um, these aren't built to suits that we're doing for customers, but I want a quality home for my end buyer to compete with any custom home that's out there. So I want the best quality product that I can deliver to the client and sell in any market. And so we'll have our tile guys come in here, do a dry pack on this and start getting ready with tile. Because the second the, the painters are done, guess who's next? 
the flooring guys. They're coming in here and they'll start devouring these floors. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerome Maldonado, 25 years buying land, building houses. If you haven't watched our prior videos that documents the process from start, from start to finish, go back into YouTube, click and watch our entire series on buying land and building houses. And next, and look forward to our next video that'll be coming up in video number 20, where we actually show you guys the shower pans done, drywall finished, painters coming in here, and we move on to the next process of buying land, building houses. Ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. If you like the content, want more of it, and want to be notified, pound that like button and click and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Go out and buy a lot, build a house. Let's make some profits, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited to bring you guys more footage. You guys gotta watch how I buy land and build houses. Now it's time for you to take action. If you wanna get a hold of the same 14-step process that we utilize to buy land, build houses, and generate over six figures on every single build, you're gonna to wanna to click below. Learn from an industry professional that has been doing it for over 20 plus years. We're still doing it today. We're still taking down builds and we're still generating over six figures on every single build.